All right. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, February 8th. We'll call to order our Board of County Commissioners meeting. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dickinson? Commissioner Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Waymeyer? Present. If you'd stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, and if we have a preacher today, we'll have an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do we have an invocation? Is there he is? Morning. Florida. Let's pray. I'm going to be taking my scripture reading out of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him, meaning God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, and also in the footnote, the just shall live by faith. We, we have faith. God will do his part. And all we have to do is just to believe. And as time, this day and age, we certainly ought to have faith. Amen. Thank you. Do we have anybody signed up for general public comment? No general public comment. All right. <laughs> our consent agenda today is to consider the minutes from our February 1st meeting. I can both approve the consent agenda. Second. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Vice Chair Waymeyer? Yes. We'll move on to our items of business, first of which is to consider special use permit uh, for Tower Associates to allow the construction and operation of a 197-foot guy-wired meteorological evaluation tower in an A1 agricultural zoning district. So, kind of the order of uh, we're going to go through this is the same one we always do. First, we'll have a staff introduce the item. Uh, then the applicant will present, uh, followed by public comment, and then commissioners will get a chance to deliberate, ask any follow-up questions if they want or need, and then uh, vote. So, staff, Pat. Good morning, commission. Uh, as uh, the narrative explained, we are looking at a MET tower for a uh, special use permit application. Uh, this MET tower is going to be a 197 feet tall. It has three guy wires. It is a temporary structure that will be there or would potentially be there for around four years to gather data. Um, there are numerous different types of data that it is there to gather. Um, the property that it will be sitting on is around 137 acres, and it is on the, I believe, northeast corner of said property. Uh, it doesn't bear on any of our setbacks. It has its uh, surrounding, it, there's enough room that if it were to collapse, it would not uh, create a hazard to anything in the area. Um, there are a few stipulations that we assign to the tower itself. Uh, these conditions include uh, safety fencing around the base of the structure to uh, protect from cattle that are grazing, that are potentially grazing. I don't know that there's any cattle on the property at this point. However, I believe there may be future um, potential that they graze that property uh, later in the year. Um, there are some other conditions that you can see on page four uh, if you want to go through them. But that was uh, basically the gist of them. Uh, this is an unlit tower because we are under the 200 uh, foot uh, specifications from the, I believe it's the FAA that makes those calls. Um, and so in that, that's basically what we had. Uh, during the planning commission, it was um, recommended for den denial on a 6-2 vote. Uh, that was conducted about three weeks ago. So there are three options that we have specified for this vote. Um, you can accept the Planning Commission's recommendation of denial. 
you can ref uh, refer the special use application back to the Planning Commission with fur further consideration pursuant to the provisions of KSA 12-757 uh, Section D, or you may override the Planning Commission's recommendation and adopt the res uh, resolution as, as it is. So um, if you need some suggested, suggested motions, you can look at page two. We have all three for denial of acceptance or, or approval or the, the kickback. So um, if you have any more questions, I'm here. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Thank you, Pat. All right. All right. Do we have an applicant present today? Yeah, so I'm Alan Kloss Anderson. I'm with the Polsonelli Law Firm representing Tower Associates on the Met Tower. So you've received the application, you've seen the staff report. I'll just mention, I'll just, I'm not going to belabor the point, but re raise two issues, two main issues. The first is what before you is a application for a metrological tower. This is not an application for wind energy. There's no generation related to this. This is not on the global issue of whether Franklin County should or should not have wind energy. That's not the application that's before you. So under, you know, if we believe in the rule of law and we do believe in, you know, the discipline that's required from your side of the table as opposed to this side of the table, you have to see the application that's before you. As much as people will come up and say you shouldn't do this because it's a step in some direction, that is not the fact. That's not a legal fact and that's not an actual fact. That's not what it is. It would be a meteorological tower in order to study the wind. Early stage to determine whether the company thought this was a location where that could happen. It is not before you whether or not this will be a wind project. If that was going to take place, there would be an entire process for that. So at this point, to, to look at the meteorological tower, not the greater. You know, it, it just, and I'm also a professor at the University of Kansas Law School, and this point is, was actually even contemplated by the Founding Fathers when they looked when, in the Federalist Paper number 10, where just because of what uh, Madison referred to as a faction comes before you and says you should take an action related to people's property rights, you shouldn't. We have to be disciplined in that. So again, it doesn't mean you support wind energy, doesn't mean you're against wind energy, but it does mean that your body has to be disciplined in looking at the application before you, not something that is not. So that's the first point. Second point is that this application, while I'm here representing Tower Associates who would construct the tower, the application is actually the underlying landowner that wants to use their property rights in order to be compensated to put this tower up. It is their property rights they want to use. It has been looked at by all the parties within the county to determine, yes, it makes sense from, both, from all, all the reasons that it needs to be looked at, including health safety and, and everything else. So this tower is not, it's not me sitting here. It's your landowner that, that is in this county that wants to use their property rights for com commerce. That is the fundamental commerce and how you use your property rights are the fun fundamental part of free market capitalism. So again, an attack on this for something that's not before you is an attack on the free market capitalism. And someone in your county wanted to use their property rights. Now, as to the tower, I've worked on most of the projects in the state, and there are 43 of them. It's been more than 20, now it's about 22 years since the first project went into operation. All of them have had met towers. All of them had before the project went in, all of them had them usually during the project and after the project. So this is nothing new. This is nothing complex as it relates to the, to the item itself. It also has not been controversial in that sense in that it's not related to the end up the wind project. That would come before you at a later point. So you'll have all the opportunity in the world to discuss that and have that free flow of discussion. But again, so all I'll, I'll leave with that is in relation to the tower itself, that's what's before you, and, and all the, the health, safety, and appropriateness of the application has been presented. So if there's any questions, otherwise, that's, that's what I have. Any questions? Yes, I have one question. Who has access to the information once it's gathered? Is, so, it, is it open to everybody? No, so it'd be for the company. It's their determination. Uh, you know, you can imagine it's proprietary. There's, they're, they're a company. They're uh, it also in, as part of, you know, Commerce, they're trying to determine whether this location is a good one or a bad one in their determination. So they take the expense, they took the cost to put it up, they're taking the cost to actually gather the data. It'd be no different than another company coming into the area and determining whether this is a good place to put in a, 
a Burger King or a tire company or anything else, they're gathering the data to make their determination whether they think this, is, this would work for their project. So it is proprietary to the company, not for their competitors and, and there's, you know, or, or some other need. So we have the possibility of several companies like yours coming in and want to do exactly the same thing, right? Sure, yeah, no, it'd be possible that another company would come before you with Fermat Tower or, or something else. But again, that's not the project, but Fermat Tower, sure. I don't know, I don't know of others, but if they, but it would not be, you know, inconceivable. What good, what good does it have for Franklin County then? You put another tower in and the information is proprietary. Well, the good is that for us. Yeah, so as it relates to the one is, is you have a land, you have a landowner in this county that would, that wants to use their property for, you know, their, their private property under a private agreement to use it for this use. So right there, you have someone who wants to use that for their, their commerce. You know, so, so right there you have, a, again, it's not me making the application. I won't, I won't benefit from the, you know, the, the payments to the landowner. The landowner will. So in that case, you have a constituent and a landowner in this county that's making an application to use their property. So right there, they're going to be compensated, and that money would flow through the county. Secondarily, what it would do is it would make a determination. And again, there's a lot of factors why a project moves forward or doesn't move forward. The first is whether or not there's adequate um, participation by landowners. If there's not, that's how we determine whether you know project's wanted or not. And if there's not, the project goes away. They may get this data and determine it's not adequate, they go away. They might find an, uh, an environmental condition or something else that goes away. They may find that um, difficulty in, in accessing the transmission or the, you know, the substation, something like that, project goes away. But what this would do is one part of that, so at some point the county may have a business that could go forward. It would be the same thing if, if a company came in <coughs> and said, I'd like to explore broadband, and they, they pay landowners to do some evaluations. That money goes into commerce. So again, it's that, those landowners that are participating and that that money would flow through the county and would give the possibility of a project, not a guarantee and something you could look at. But that's, that's generally when a planning commission and a county commission thinks of being um, a place that believes in private property rights, believes in you know, capitalist commerce and those kind of things, letting landowners use their property when it's been evaluated like this has, again, just the Met Tower, then they generally believe that commerce should, you know, and, and should be allowed. Does the Met Tower have any purpose other than to determine the viability for wind energy? No. There's nothing else associated with it. It doesn't, it, it truly just has the meteorological parts on top and nothing else. It doesn't have an electrical source that goes and does anything. That, nothing else to it. Does your company have any uh, agreement with any uh, energy company? Do you have any agreements with any? Do you mean for a potential offtake of the power if there were a project? No, does your company have any financial interest with an energy company, any energy company? If I, I try to answer the question, you can correct, you can kind of. I guess my question is, is the energy company supporting your company to do this research? Who do you represent? Yeah, so I represent um, the ne next year a family of com companies. So the Tower Associates is the one for the me meteorological tower, but it's part of next year energy resources. So I represent both of those entities in this. So Tower Associates is, is uh, affiliated with uh, next year energy resources. Next year energy resources has um, nine operating wind projects in the state of Kansas. Um, has been here for for. It has projects for more than 20 years. So they're the first one in Kansas um, and all that. So if, if that's what I mean, yes, this would be associated with next year energy resources. But there's no, again, this is early stage in a project. There's no other contracts with like, uh, as related to the wind project itself. There's no offtake agreement. There's nothing beyond uh, what we're talking about here. Well, it seems funny to me that uh the energy companies are already leasing land uh, parcels. It's all right. I mean, they're already leasing up properties to put in wind energy right now. Mm -hmm. So to me, it almost looks like it's inevitable what your results are going to show at the end of the day. Well, I've heard that point before. Uh, yeah. We're not. Uh, this isn't the place for applause. Save it for Sunday. So two things, and this is a little bit of a 101. And, and the first part, I'd say on the last part, 
if we had the results already, we wouldn't be here. If we, you know, people say that, gosh, you can go to nowhere, you can go to somewhere else and get all this data. You can't. Obviously, you can't. This information fine tunes the data to the specific, specific location so they can make an evaluation. If we had the information already or as a preordained decision, we wouldn't go through this process. <laughs> I would not be here today. We wouldn't do it. That's, that's just the first part. There's no question related to these MET towers. They give more specific data that, that fine tunes, you know, to, to, the, to a much uh, finer degree. Second part is it relates to the, how a project's developed and the leasing. So again, there's a number of elements that are required for a project to move forward before it ever comes to a county commission because there may never be a project, and that happens all the time. So one is, uh, are there you know, willing landowners? Do people in your county want to participate? Which seems like that'd be interesting information eventually for you to know whether or not people signed up enough to make for a wind project that could be viable. Second is the, is the wind resource there. So that's what this part is. That is a, the reason why it's for four years is because it's a multi-year process. These are expensive projects. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. You don't make that investment without good information. So we have the willing <coughs> participants, good resource. Uh, uh, then you also have all the permitting that goes with it, which would be environmental, that'd be FAA, that'd be all the different things that go with that part of the evaluation. And then eventually there has to be an off taker. Someone has to say, I like that project enough to say I'll purchase the power. Ultimately, if all those things get in, in place in a zone county such as yours, then it would come before you to determine whether or not it makes sense for you in light of the specifics of the project and whether it should move forward. So to go to the point, leasing is an early stage activity just to determine whether or not people want to participate. Again, it's the same thing. If someone came in for broadband and was interested in doing something or pick, pick another, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter what it is, there's a number of steps they would determine to see is there viability here. Does, does whatever work that this, I could put a business here. So leasing is, does not make it a predetermined outcome that a project will go forward, partially because you all will get another chance at it. That's why all those steps are part of it. And yes, the company's gonna invest a lot of money, you know, in looking at it in your county, which, you know, and if it doesn't move forward, that, that'll be their loss, that's the risk they take. But none of that takes it out of your hands in the future. So again, that all will come you know, as part of it, and I'm happy to talk about any part of the process related to that, but you all will get that chance if it was going to be a conditional use permit for a project. Mm -hmm. What this is is simply the tower, and one of your landowners would like to participate in that regard for that limited purpose. That person doesn't, isn't asking for a wind turbine to be permitted. The person's not asking for you to approve a wind project. That's not on your table. And, and I know it's difficult, because what's going to happen is we're going to have a myriad of people coming up and saying they want you to stop it. This is one step in the, in the you know, to, to that end. That's not true. The second part of that is that's the difficulty of being in your shoes, which is easier on this side of the table. You should follow the law. You should believe in the rule of law. And you should limit it to what is, the, what is technically before you not what people want you to do in relation to saying, you know, something that may happen in the future. There's no question that's coming. That's the challenge of your position. You're in government, not a member of the public, and there is limits on that, and we should respect that in the rule of law. All right, any other questions? That's all I have for now. No? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on to public comment. <coughs> I'm told that compared to other counties or other places where this is going on, we're more open, more willing to let people speak. I think it's something that's very good to be good at, but uh, it may come at the cost of us being here for a while today, which is fine. We're willing to list as, listen as long as it, it takes. Um, the rules for public comment are, are largely the same as they, they always are. Um, you get one chance, one visit to the podium, uh, there's a five minute time limit, same as it always is. I'll, uh, am I gonna keep time? I can keep time? Okay, I'll do, I can indicate when you're down to a minute. Uh, keep in mind you're addressing the commission, not firing up the crowd or saying, saying things to folks behind you. This is, we're here to listen and uh, need your input to help make a good decision. Uh, you can't speak on others' behalf. There's no delivering messages. You speak for yourself. Um, Please limit your clapping. You know, we're at five minutes ahead. We're potentially going to be here a long time. We can't stop for, for clapping and, and interrupting other folks' time. And, um, yeah, everyone will get a chance to speak. So we're going to go through the room. Anything? 
Okay. When you come to the podium, please clearly state your first and last name and your address where you, your full address where you live. And that's for the minutes. So. You want to take a head count first before we start this. Yep. Yeah, we'll do that. So <clears throat> one thing we might do before we get this started, and, and certainly would echo everything Colt just said, every single one of you will have five minutes if you want it. That being said, one way that, that may be somewhat powerful for the commissioners to, to see where you all are at is if before this we kind of allow you to raise hands and, and show them, are you here in support of this application or are you here <coughs> against this application? That way um, you can still come up and say you're against it, but it would also allow them the opportunity to just sh see a showing of hands on just, who's for it. And just as a way to another way to potentially be considered to your, your neighbor's time. And, you know, if you came here and maybe not excited about speaking, but do want to show your support. So as a show of hands, who is here to uh, encourage us to deny this request? All right. And uh, on the other side, uh, who showed up here today to encourage us to consider this special use permit. All right. And thank you. And uh, one last thing you may want to consider Again, along the spirit of uh, being respectful to others' time, uh, if you've been here last meeting, the meeting before, have information that you've already sent us, communicated with one way or another, maybe you, you don't want to repeat yourself or uh, repeat something that the person right before you took the time to say. So with that being said, uh, let's start at the front of the room, the, the front row, and uh, we'll work our way to the back. So anybody in the front want to speak? Come on up. Name and address, please. Make sure they can hear me in the back. Diane Carl, 2112, Old Highway 50, Ottawa. Um, I didn't come prepared to speak today. I'm not much of a public speaker. But a couple of things that the gentleman who spoke just a few minutes ago brought up got me to thinking. Um, letter of the law, and you guys are charged with a number of things. But you all are elected by the rest of us, your constituents, the people who live in this county. And you represent us. And therefore, I feel like you need to represent the majority of the county and how this goes, whether it's the Met Tower to start with or it comes up later, should the Met Tower be approved, if they decide that windmills are a possibility. Um, this is all going to going to be happening again. Um, I personally am obviously against them. I don't want them in my landscape. Franklin County is too beautiful. I don't care for the impact they have on the environment. Um, but probably one of the bigger things that concerns me is the impact on neighbors. You have a visual impact. You have a use impact. Yes, that man who has that property and wants to participate, you know, I agree with him, but not to the detriment of the people surrounding him. I don't want a pig farm next to my property. It's commercial. Hey, great. But I sure don't want it next to me. A broadband tower is one tower. I can deal with a one tower, but I can't deal with a 90 to 200 that are constantly, or sometimes constantly, sometimes not at all, moving. Um, there was one other thing that he mentioned. I think I've covered it already. It's just that if this gentleman wants to put in a feedlot, or this gentleman wants to put in a pig farm, and it's adjoining me, I'm not going to be happy. And there are going to be a lot of other people in that adjoining area that won't be happy. And this is no different. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Norm, come on up. Norman Woogie, 3790 Pawnee Road, Ottawa, Kansas. And I'm against them. I one time was a salesperson 
and we were trained to keep a foot in the door just a little bit. Then we have a strategy on how we can convince the people. I apologize for that. I visited with people with the wind in the windmill areas, and they hate them. I hope my information is correct. So, if my memory, if I'm, <clears throat> pardon, if my memory serves me right, the windmill people offered a choice of windmills or solar panels. The next contact was planning and zoning, where pictures were shown. The pictures were not of the windmills, but probably of the communi <coughs> communication towers with more like a TV antenna on top of them, and they showed guide wires. The towers, the windmill towers do not. Is this their tactic to sell the product? I don't like to be lied to or misled. It's a display of smoke and mirrors. Why didn't they show the truth about the windmills? The truth is the windmills reach 30 stories high in the sky. In the center of the propellers, there's a cabin, which has as a gearbox, enormous propeller shaft, gears, and a generator. The cabin is as large as a school bus, which to go weighs about 10 times as much as a D6 caterpillar. That's the real picture. When their fallacy is exposed and turned down, you will keep control of the county. It is like the pipeline people. I work for a pipeline. A person will not sign up. The utility will condemn the surrounding properties. And the pipeline goes right on through. You, <clears throat> they will condemn your land, as they always do. I tried to compare the windmill clusters to real life as close as I could come to is a marriage. You get engaged, where we are now. You might get married and enter a contract. If the marriage fails, you can get out of a contract with a cost, not with the utilities. This, <clears throat> this commission legacy is in a balance. Our country's future is at risk if you all sell out. Please stand up to these people. Please protect us and ourselves, your friends, our friends, and the neighbors. Thank you. Anyone else in the front room? Ro, want to speak? Come on up. Hello, I'm Susan Hughes, 1414 Olive here in Ottawa. I'm a little confused if this tower company is a part of Next Air, but it's not leading necessarily to windmills, and what is this information they're collecting? Why do they want it? A big factor seems to be that the landowner wants it. Well, from the leases I've seen, when the windmill company next era assigns them, they no longer have control over their own property. And even more serious than that, because that's their choice, their neighbors do not. I'd like to read you this little quote. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is from the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Well, it seems to me that this next era and whatever is leading to them wants to take away those rights from a lot of people. The people that are the neighbors to these windmills have no control over it. They have to deal with the light flickers, the noise, the infrasound, which is very dangerous. It's been tested at dangerous levels in people's houses. All that from an innocent tower. Hmm. I've come across that a lot of uh, things use lights and noise to drive people down, like cults, some governments, terrorists. This is how they break people from keeping them asleep. And that's exactly what these towers do to the neighbors of the towers that did not sign the leases. They cannot sleep at night because of the noise, 
the infrasound, the flashing lights. It's just a bad thing. Small airplanes cannot go over it, so they're, what about crop dusting? Life flight helicopters have to go around it, but may take an extra 15 minutes trying to get there to save somebody's life. So to me, these things are interfering with those people's right of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. They can't sell their property because now valuation of property goes down 40% once these windmills come in. So I don't see the purpose of this tower if it's not leading to the wind towers. You know, what, what, what information are they gathering? They just want to know for their own curiosity how much the wind blows out there? I don't think so. I think this is a very important decision, one we, we can't go back on, maybe on the tower, but once on the windmills, we can't go back. So it just, I know it's a tough decision. I'm praying for you guys to make the right choice. Thank you. Front row, anyone else? Name's Kevin Evans. I uh, live at 3628 Nevada Road here in Ottawa. Uh, not much of a public speaker, wasn't planning on speaking, but after listening to the spokesperson for the energy company there, wanting the tower put up, I thought of a couple of things. One, uh, he says it's not a step in that direction, which that can't be true, or you wouldn't be collecting data to, to further have further interest in uh, putting towers up. Uh, also, the commission has did turned down things in the past for, he said it's just, for one the spokesperson also said, it's a property owner's right, we need to look at that. Well, it's also the property, we've had people in here wanting a wedding venue on their property that's gotten turned down. And that would have only directly affected the people localized real close to the wedding venue for traffic or motocross track. We've turned those down too. No motocross tracks directly affected the people in close proximity, well a tower, 117 foot tower, and then collect data years down the road. They say, well, we got enough data here. We want wind energy here. Then they plaster towers all the way across the county, which drops as the last person spoke, property value down to as much as 40%, where all these property owners have a $400,000 house, just went down to $240,000. Everybody, and that's affecting everybody, everybody in this room that's against it. Not just localized, it's the whole county. We all gotta stare at them, we all gotta listen to them. There's just too much evidence otherwise. So I just ask you guys to vote against it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second, anyone on? Uh, sorry, anyone still on the first row want to speak? And we're on to the second row. Hello, I'm Sabrina Metter at 3404 California Road, Pomona, Kansas. Um, I'm here to ask that you accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and deny the special use permit application for this MET tower. MET towers are the pre-construction phase. They are also set up to determine where wind turbines will be placed in a project. Um, this tower is not the first one in this proposed project. Next Tower Associate, or Next Tower, not Next Tower, Next Era, also doing business as Tower Associates, has already started collecting the data they needed in Douglas County. In 2014, in Douglas County, they installed a MET tower. In 2018, a sonic detection and ranging device, also known as a SODAR unit, was installed. So that isn't Franklin County, but it is part of the 3,000 acre proposed site encompassing parts of Franklin, Osage, and Douglas County. That was mentioned by Fiona Bagwell in the September 15th, 2021 meeting when NextEra came and formally introduced themselves to you, the commission. Um, since then, they have been acquiring land leases in those three counties. So this MET tower is just another phase. Um, so I wanna explain why this permit should be denied. So I'm gonna go back to December 11th, 2019, when the commission approved the amendments to add the commercial wind and solar to the comprehensive plan and zoning pages. 
I do first want to compliment, I believe Mr. Brown, you helped, on, are you Mr. Brown? All right, you helped on that along with Mr. Walrod, the former planning director, and it seems like you guys spent a lot of time coming up with this plan. I also know during that time, I was busy planning with my husband, the building and moving, physically moving of a home at that time. And so any public meetings and hearings that were going on at that time did not even come on my radar because I'm worried about working with Pat, who did a great job with us um, on that time. So anything that came up was not even on my radar. But I do appreciate that the county came up with a plan and that you took the initiative because many counties in Kansas don't even have a plan at all. Um, but at that time in 2019, it sounded like um, you guys knew more about the solar side of renewable energy because there was a solar development company that helped throughout the whole process of writing our zoning regulations. And also in that meeting, Mr. Dunn, you mentioned that these amendments were, quote, a good starting point. And I agree fully that that was a good starting point, but I don't think it's finished. I believe this, that it's not finished, because in that same meeting, Ian, who doesn't happen to be here today, she said, quote, I didn't think Franklin County was good for wind, end quote. And later in that 2021 meeting with NextEra regarding utility scale wind projects, she said, quote, we would need more information. I really don't know anything regarding wind. Also, in that amended comprehensive plan, um, 6.5, it state, or the county states, um, quote, that it will continually evaluate and update rules, regulations, and development procedures regarding commercial renewable energy systems based on latest technologies and changing standards and associated, associated principles, end quote. These amendments were a great starting point, but I believe that the comprehensive plan and the zoning regulations need to be revisit, revisited and amended before there's any further progress. Also in that 2019 meeting, Mr. Waymire, regarding renewable energies, you, you said, quote, we wouldn't want renewable energies, which you may see as a positive thing to have a negative impact on your neighbors and get a bad reputation. Wind energy will have a negative impact and a bad reputation in this community if regulations, especially setbacks, are not addressed and amended. So this is why you should not accept, or why you should, sorry, why you should accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and deny the special use permit application for this Met Tower. Thank you. Thanks. All right, second row, anyone else? Good morning. My name is Roberta Galashin. I live at 3775 Reno Drive, Ottawa, Kansas, here in our lovely Franklin County. I would like to thank the Franklin County Commissioners for their service as the governing body, also for the time it takes to perform all duties as an elected official. My hopes are that you have done your due diligence in respect of your constituents by researching, learning, and understanding the consequences of the decisions that you will make. My initial request is to take the recommendation that was voted on and denied by a majority of the Franklin County Planning and Zoning Commission regarding the Meteorological Evaluation Tower, also known as the MET Tower. Once again, please deny the special use permit application number 2211-2009. If not, I would then request a minimum 12-month moratorium in order to further research the negative effects this would have on our lovely county, its residents, and our future. If allowed, the Met Tower is the initial footprint into Franklin County by out-of-state corporations preying on our landowners looking to implement their project relating to wind-powered electrical power generation and transmission, also known as Commercial Wind Energy Center. Constructing wind turbines nearly as tall as the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. 
I personally have worked at a local bank for over 31 years, most recently in the lending, compa lending capacity, helping current and future Franklin County residents purchase land and to fulfill their dream of building their own home in a rural setting. Most are interested in, of, interested in getting out of metropolitan and suburban areas by purchasing a few acres to have a home and possibly a hobby farm. I learned recently that an applicant was interested in purchasing land near the Franklin-Douglas County line and wanted to build their new home. Because this was all public knowledge, I inquired if they were aware of the corporate wind leases and what could be coming in the future and how it could affect their future as a landowner in that area. I was saddened to deflate their excitement at their impending purchase, but I also felt that I would, would have wanted to be informed if I were in their shoes. I also want to point out that if a wind energy lease is signed by a landowner, this lease must be filed with the Register of Deeds and then it puts a cloud on the title of that land. Once signed, your banker will not want to lend money against your land. Not just to you, but this cloud could remain for up to 90 years and will affect your descendants or anybody else that may want to purchase that land. What if a family member were interested in surveying off a 10 or 20 acre plot to purchase from grandma and grandpa or from mom and dad? Nope, they won't be able to purchase with a loan if they have $400,000 cash or $200,000, however big the plot might be, they could, they could probably do it, but they cannot get a loan with a clear title that the bank would be happy with because the lease remains in priority position and the bank won't allow that. How about building a house? Nope. Again, the bank won't be interested because that lease agreement carries with the landowner landowner change. The lease company essentially controls everything with the land, not the landowner. The landowner can't mortgage the land without consulting with the corporate operator, the corporate wind company. In conclusion, Franklin County must ban commercial energy. We must ban the encroachment of wind turbines being constructed in Franklin County. The outdated Franklin County Comprehensive Plan must be amended to protect ourselves, our neighbors, and our land from these renewable energy falsehoods. Deny the Met Tower. Thank you. Roberta, moving down the second row, anyone else? Come on up. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Hamill. I live at 2559 Nebraska Road, Ottawa. I don't have a, pre a planned speech for you, but um, I will tell you that I moved here uh, just about two and a half years ago, and I came from California. I don't know if any of y'all have been to California, but there are wind turbines. There's thousands of them, just thousands of them. So I'm not here to discuss the, the, the uh, uh, technical aspects of it. But my feeling is we need to take care of our properties. Um, I have a little 80-acre farm. I don't want to have any wind turbines around me. And so I'm asking that the board deny the net tower permit for the good of the county, for the good of all the residents, for me, because I just moved here, and I don't want to have to go back to California. But if they bring in the wind towers, I most definitely will try to do something. So thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Second row. Good morning. Um, my name is Melvin Winstone. I live at 4213 Kentucky Terrace. And uh, I, first of all, I want to thank all of you. You know, you're in a very uh, difficult position. Um, I am aware of a group of over 800 of your citizens, fellow citizens here in Franklin County that are against wind turbines coming here. 
And while the representative for the tower company will tell you that, um, you know, this is just a step to uh, see if it's viable. I, I, I like the term viable. So what is viability? Well, if 800 of our citizens do not want, and I had it just by the way, I had a prepared thing and I threw it all away. I might loan it out to somebody else. It was the viability thing that strikes me because when you look at this, okay, it's a simple tower, but is it viable? They're, they're checking for viability. Will it be viable if over 800 of our citizens are opposed to this? As you look at the rules that are in place now, the zoning laws, um, the things that have been put in place, the setback arrangements, are they truly, you know, when you guys did that originally, was it real? Was it here and now? And I, you know, I've, I understand it seems like there was probably limited participation in some of those meetings. That's not the case now. It's not limited participation. So I think the, the reality, everyone is looking at this, it's, it's almost a panic. It's a real concern that these windmills will be in our, our yards. They'll be in our, neighbor's, <coughs> in our neighbor's property and we'll have to deal with those forever. So what are we looking for? You know, first of all, I, I want to slow the process down just a little bit. I think everybody is on edge. I'm on edge. I don't want to live by those. My wife and I moved here, much like the lady before us. We came from Johnson County. I wanted to get away, and I wanted to get to the country. I wanted to enjoy what you all have, what you've built. It's a beautiful community, a beautiful county. We want to preserve that. So I'm going to be brief here. What I would propose is that we slow down, put a moratorium in so that we can assess the risk, you may say this is only a tower, but this is the gateway. And if, if as a county, our setbacks and the things that we do and that we have in place are undesirable, that's going to, that, the viability is not there. There's no reason to do one of these towers. So there are a lot of things that make this viable. And I think they're the things that we do, not the tower, the things that we do with our setbacks, with what we're willing to allow, the way the business practices are, Let's not be um, fooled into what these decisions are. They're big decisions. So what do I want? Well, um, I did have that written down. Um, initially, deny the Met Tower application today. I'd like a three-year moratorium to fully understand all of the concerns. And I had those written out. I'm, there will be others that will share those with you whether it's safety, whether it's easement. Uh, there are a lot of things there, but I think, you know, a three-year moratorium to make sure we are prepared for what goes into our future and our children's future. And eventually, I would like a ban on wind turbines here in Franklin County. I, I don't think they're what the people want. I know it's not what my family wants. And so that's what I'm asking today is let's have a moratorium. Let's slow the process down. Let's, let's get ready for the inevitable of what these folks are going to bring to you. So that's, that's my point for today. Thank you. Second row. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the third row. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Carl Gardner. I live at 352 Missouri Terrace in Richmond, Kansas. Like a lot of other people in this county, I was raised in farm country. I came here and I bought a home because I live on farm ground. You have a responsibility to this county, to its <coughs> residents, and to its posterity to keep it a safe rural community. Next Era has been involved in multiple lawsuits. You can look that up, it's public record. They didn't send a high-priced lawyer from a large law firm like Poles and Ellie because they just want to put up a Met Tower for information. <laughs> There's large money behind this. Quite frankly, I think if you do your research, you'll find that most of it is government funded. You've got a government that's $31 trillion in debt with hundreds of trillions of dollars in unfunded liabilities. Is that what we want to put our county through when this goes south? I don't think so. 
And I don't think many of the, your constituents probably feel the same way. We live here, this is our home, but we don't need to bring the outside corporate world in to trash it and then leave us with the remains of what's left. I applaud you gentlemen for doing your job. Deny the Met Tower. Help Franklin County continue to be the great place it is. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. My name is Daryl McCune. I live at 1428 South of Love here in Ottawa. Um, I think my main uh, point here uh, today is that uh, this tower that is being discussed is going to be temporary. It's going to be in place for about two to four years, and then it'll be removed by the company. Uh, notice was sent to seven of the surrounding property owners, and I think it's important to know that there were no objections raised at that time uh, by those owners uh, by the time the Planning Commission uh, decided. Uh, it's also important to note that the staff here in Franklin County, your professional staff, recommends approval of this special use permit. Uh, that's why they're hired, in order to collect the information that you guys rely on for the Planning Commission and for your information. Uh, in 2019, as was mentioned earlier, uh, the Commission did uh, adopt zoning regulations uh, in Section 3-301. Uh, there's 22 pages in that uh, part of that uh, zoning regulations. Uh, subsection T has to do with wind energy on private land. Uh, subsection U has to do with wind conservation systems that are commercial. And subsection V... Uh, solar energy and conversion systems that are commercial. So I, kn I know people have said that that should be revisited, but it, it, those regulations, those zoning regulations are in place at the current time. Uh, it, by d adopting those zoning regulations, it would seem that the county commission has already gone through the thoughtful process of setting in place guidelines for the establishment of renewable energy here in Franklin County. Uh, I'm sure that those regulations were based on research. Consequently, it just seems to me that we shouldn't be afraid of additional research. That's all this is. This application for this meteorological tower is just for more research. <laughs> so are we, in this day and age, are we going to be afraid of, of research just to get information? That's, that's my point. Um, whether commercial wind farms are appropriate for our county is a discussion that certainly needs to be had, and obviously there are people that are against that, and that's fine. Everybody should have that opinion. If they, you know, everybody should be entitled to their opinion, and I respect those opinions. But for today, that's not the topic at hand. Today, we're, we're discussing whether this particular tower is appropriate or not, uh, and the decision by the Planning Commission was appropriate. Um, let's not be afraid of simply collecting data necessary to make informed decisions down the road. I highly encourage you to approve the special use permit and overturn the decision of the Planning Commission. Thank you. Come on up. Yep. Hi guys, Shandy Prouty, uh, 4848 Louisiana Road, Baldwin City, Kansas. I am still in Franklin County, and I appreciate you guys allowing this meeting to be so open. Um, some of our neighbors did not have that ability, so thank you so much. All right, so what's in question today, this Met Tower? A meteorolog I knew I was going to mess it up. Meteorological Experimental Tower that... They say, Nextera says, they need four financials to complete a step in their loan process. Please. They're backed by BlackRock. We know that they do not need a loan for this. I was waiting to hear the Federalist speech, and we heard it. Next, you'll hear a Berkeley study. This is all a recipe, a recipe that has steps in the process. This Met Tower is a step in the process, and we cannot be naive enough to, to think that this is just 
for information. My 10-year-old child said yesterday, Mom, we can find wind speed pressure where the wind is best in the area on our phone. So I would say next era, there's an app for that. So I would ask the planning committee to, I'm sorry, the county commissioners to vote in, uh, with the recommendation of no to this special use permit for this tower. In the comprehensive plan, 6.1 states, protect prime farmland by development mitigation measures that limit or reduce impacts associated with de development of commercial energy systems. What are we protecting the farmland from? We're protecting it from eminent domain. Mr. Dunn, I think your question earlier to council is that Nextera has par partnered with Orion Energy, and that is public knowledge that you can find. The KCC, Kansas Corporation Commission, has mm -hmm. given Nextera eminent domain rights if they have any reasonable cause. That is why they have been here getting 24 contracts in Franklin County, unbeknownst to all of us before this process started. That is their reasonable cause. We know that this Met Tower today, which needs to be voted no, is just a step in the process. It's not just to get information. People are already moving out of our county because of these contracts. This is a land grab, <laughs> and they will not stop. And this is the first step to get their foot in the door to do that. My question is how many people attended and gave feedback on all sides about the comprehensive plan? I didn't know about it. I've been here for 20 years. I didn't know that these meetings were happening. We were giving um, Larry, who was the previous zoning uh, gentleman, kudos because he did such a great job of researching, pulling 14 counties together uh, to make sure that the, our regs and rules were, were, were proper, were appropriate. Now, with that being said, um, Mr. Weimer, quoting, we wouldn't want to have renewable energy to have a negative impact <coughs> on your neighbor and get a bad reputation. Mrs. Dickinson, Franklin County, Kansas is not the best place in the state of Kansas for wind. It's also not the best place in the state of Kansas for sun. We are a close proximity to a major metropolitan area. We're at the tail end. And as far as huge wind farms are, probably not in the future. They've maximized where they want to be at this point. So when we met Next Era the first time in Franklin County, Alan Anderson, the council in front of you that was just here, stated that the county will have an increased property tax value. Please go to the YouTube. I listened to it last night. So if property taxes are going up and property value is decreasing because it is a decreased desirability and your Panasonic plant is coming in and pulling people to Douglas County, what kind of recipe is that for Franklin County? It's not a positive one. I've learned, I've learned in this process that I am not a flight person. I am a fight person. I've learned that because I've been followed multiple times. I've had people visit my home and they weren't there to talk to me. Thank you. So with this being said, we are not going to go away. This won't be the last time you see these red shirts. We want to keep our county, our county. We are not going to let in some power company or energy company, excuse me, and a contract say where I can build, where, how high I can build, when I can build, etc. That's not how America is made. That's not why people move to the Midwest, and that's not why we live in these flyover states. So no one asked for this. These farmers here in Franklin County are very smart. No one is suffering. If they were, their neighbor would help them. We don't want this. I have 230 citizen petitions in the last 19 days, and you have close to 900 members on your anti-turbine Facebook page for Franklin County. We do not want this. So I'm asking to ban commercial energy. If individuals want to do residential energy, by all means, have at it. Solar, wind, whatever they want to do. But ban commercial energy companies. Moratorium on this special use permit for two years. We have to amend the comprehensive plan because the constant thing about our life right now is change. And the setbacks need to be a mile from participating and non-participating participating property lines. Thank you. All right. Anyone else on the third row?
Good morning. Uh, my name is Eileen Spickler, and I live at 601 South Borough Street, Lot 24 here in Ottawa. Um, I had a whole bunch of prepared remarks, and like someone else, I just sort of threw them out because as I've been listening, um, I'm hearing a lot of, of information that I actually didn't understand or know about, and one of my frustrations has been that things are information is very difficult to find on the Franklin County website, quite frankly. Um, and so I, you know, I appreciate the, there have been very many measured comments and I really, really appreciate that. Um, I am not a huge fan of Next Era. They've broken the law many, many times. Um, and, but I also believe in the rule of law. And um, right now there are, poli my understanding is that there are policies in place that um, haven't, Regarding renewable energy, if uh, if the I, I, and I can't, I, I'm, it's interesting because I'm changing um, ex what I was going to say. Um, but if if there needs to be change, it, uh, if there ne the policies need to be changed, maybe we do need a moratorium. You know, um, because um, I've spoken with people who live near wind farms, and and one of the issues is the resonance that you feel in your chest. You know, the closer you get, the, the deeper it is. Um, and, but I also hear a lot of reactivity. I hear a lot of jumping to conclusions. I hear a lot of putting the cart before the horse. And I, I, I think we need to investigate uh, more, because there are, there are pros to wind energy, for sure, you know. Um, there are cons to wind energy. There are pros to gas and fossil fuels. But there are a lot of cons to present fossil fuels tool. And my, <coughs> my belief is that we want to mitigate the cons and accentuate the pros of all sorts of energy. You know, their alternative energy is here. It's not going away. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I think it needs a whole lot more investigation. And I would support a moratorium and and doing more investigation, and if possible, changing the policies when the next policy change takes place, which in my understanding is in December of every year or, or something. I'm, I'm still, again, it's, I'm new. I've only been here for a little over four years. And um, so I really would, you know, I, I would, and this might go under the other area to comment on, but I think the whole Franklin County website needs to be redone because it's really difficult to find information. I was looking for information and I couldn't find it. And if there was more openness and more transparency, um, I think it, that might help a lot. And so thank you very much for listening to my concerns. Third row, yeah, come on up. Uh, Lloyd McClure, 2007 Iowa Road, Ottawa. As a couple of our commissioners, I'm a graduate of the Franklin County Planning Commission, and we dealt with this when wind energy first came into effect on a private note. And thanks to good planning staff, we basically put a moratorium on this until we had time to study this. The people that came and were in favor of it were all salespeople, and we needed to be like California where this started. You could have an 80-foot tower on a half-acre lot, and every half-acre lot needed one. And But like I say, thanks to good planning staff that we had, we basically put a moratorium on this till we had a chance to study it and come up with rules and have some public hearings of our own. And I think in this case, that's what this county commission needs to do is put a moratorium on this so you can study all the aspects of this. One of the things that I've got a child and grandchildren in Texas, so I go through Oklahoma and Texas all the time. The amount of those that I've watched for 25 years that are burned, have oil leaking out of them, that are turned off when I go multiple times a year back and forth, uh, and there's an environmental issue with when these reach their lifespan 
that the, our federal government hasn't dealt with yet. I, I think we need to study this. Do we want these things at some point dumped in a landfill out here? <laughs> uh, I, I just think that you people need to step back and listen to your planning commission and, and develop some rules for this county. And I would hope that you guys would take the time to do that and make an informed decision. <coughs> All right. Hello, my name is Sean Xavier Torres. I live at 513 East Grand in Ottawa, Kansas. And bear with me, I'm used to staring at a wall when I speak. So, <laughs> um, wind farms, I want to talk about the viability and risk of uh, wind farms. And like any large scale energy infrastructure, they can have some negative impacts that we have already researched, actually, and they include. An impact on wildlife, wind turbines can pose a risk to birds and bats, especially when placed in migration pathways. Interference with radio signals, wind turbines can interfere with radio signals and other communication systems. Property values, some studies have suggested that wind farms can have an impact on property values, although the evidence is not clear and the effects can vary widely depending on the location and circumstances, such as if they interfere with our trail systems. Noise pollution. The spinning blades of wind turbines can generate noise, which can be disruptive to people living near wind farms. Visual impact. Wind turbines can be visually distracting, particularly in areas with scenic views, like from a trail system. Now let's take a look at the potential ecological problems of a wind farm in this part of the world. Uh, the Midwest region of the United States is an important migration pathway for many bird species as they travel between their breeding and wintering grounds. Birds use a variety of migration pathways through the Midwest, including the Mississippi Flyway, which is a major migration pathway which runs from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic and passes through the Midwest region of the United States. The Central Flyway, which also runs through the Midwest region and the Atlantic Flyway. It is important to consider these migration pathways when siting wind farms in the Midwest as collisions with wind turbines can result in death and be a significant risk to bird populations. To minimize the impact of wind farms on birds, it is important to carefully choose the location and design of wind farms to minimize the risk of bird collisions and this may involve siting wind farms in areas with lower levels of bird migration, avoiding sensitive bird habitats, and implementing measures to reduce the visibility of wind turbines to birds. Additionally, wind farm operators can implement measures to minimize bird fatalities, such as shutting down turbines during periods of high bird migration or installing extra bird deterrent systems. Now let's talk about communications and emergency communications here in Franklin County. Wind farms can interfere with wireless signals in several ways, including Electromagnetic interference, commonly called EMI. The spinning blades of wind turbines can generate electromagnetic interference that can disrupt radio and television signals, as well as other communication systems. Uh, the shadow flicker, the shadow cast by the blades of wind turbines can flicker and cause interference with wireless signals, particularly in areas of high levels of ambient light. Reflection, wind turbines can reflect wireless signals, causing them to be distorted or to bounce in unexpected directions. Absorption. Wind turbines can absorb wireless signals, reducing the strength and reliability of the signals. These types of interference are generally limited to the immediate vicinity of wind, wind farms and can be minimized through proper design and operation of wind farms. In some cases, mitigation measures such as extra signal boosters or additional transmitters with directional antennas can be used to improve signal quality. Additionally, I was curious if these landowners are aware that they may not be able to use their cell phones or receive radio or TV transmissions on their property wirelessly. And most of all, I don't believe we as a community are trying to destroy the use of our trail systems by building a wind farm. I don't think any of us want to have our scenic views destroyed by towering windmills or worse, casting shadows and generating disruptive noise for us folks using the trail system. Um, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Anyone else on the third row? Moving on to the next row then. Hi. Hi, I'm Pamela Saul, 1457 Haskell Road in Williamsburg, Kansas. Good morning and thanks for hearing us all today. I just have a couple of questions um, because of the gentleman who is a lawyer mentioned about the rule of law. Is it, if, if they sue you for not allowing this tower, uh, are you going to win against them? I mean, it's a, I just want to know, and if not, is it my tax dollars that are going to pay for this? 
because it seems like you need to change your codes before denying this. So either, I don't know if a moratorium will stop that, or what can make that viable, but it's in your code or your bylaws or whatever it's in. So before denying it, it makes sense to maybe change that. And that way we can avoid lawsuits and, and um, spending taxpayer money on lawsuits that aren't necessary when all they're doing is they say to study it. I mean, that's all they can do with this step according to the gentleman with the suit. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Hmm. Who's next? Can we go to the next row? Come on up. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. My name is Judy Hancock. I own a farm at 3469 Tennessee Road that's been in our family over 100 years. I live in Leewood at 12612 Pawnee Lane. Um, I urge the commission to deny this application outright. And I join many others in suggesting that a moratorium, I would suggest at least two years, be put on wind turbines and wind meteorological towers so that you can update the regulations and the comprehensive plan, and in the course of that, familiarize yourself with many of the new efforts underway by many other local governments in Kansas and elsewhere to deal with this issue. And perhaps most importantly, and I offer my pro bono time to help make this happen, to help you get acquainted with the lawsuits that are being filed against wind farm operators by Kansans and a bunch of other people around the country, including lawsuits against Next Era. Um, if you look at those lawsuits, you'll find uh, some very interesting things, as I have over the last few days, about what is being what they're being accused of, and also what courts are finding as fact concerning their conduct. This application letter is from an outfit called Tower Associates LLC. But interestingly, when you look at their supporting documents, <laughs> they don't have a logo for Tower on there. I bet Tower doesn't even have a logo. Instead, they have a logo of Next Era Energy Resources. Well, if you check Delaware and Florida Secretary of State's websites, you'll see they have a whole slew of companies having the name Next Era. They, I'm a lawyer. I've represented businesses my whole life. And this is a common tactic to minimize, shift, and eliminate liability, is to set up a whole bunch of companies using similar names, but each is a separate entity. So Tower Associates, you know who they seem to be 100% owned by? A company called ESI Energy, because that's the company that filed the annual report for Tower with the Secretary of State of Kansas. And who is ESI Energy? Well, they're owned by a, a next era energy company. But guess what, gentlemen? Less than a year ago, the owner of your applicant, ESI Energy LLC, a wholly owned company of the next era group of companies, they pled guilty in federal court. They were sued by the US Justice Department for failing to comply with federal regulations governing their wind farms. And ESI agreed to pay almost a little over $8 million in fines and restitutions to the federal government. They agreed to implement a remedial plan that could cost up to $27 million. They agreed to five years probation. 
And I have a copy of the Justice Department's uh, release on this. Glad to give it to you all. Uh, and when I read the release, one of the things that most disturbed me was the Justice Department and getting them to cop to the plea. The Justice Department said, EI, ESI, the, the owner of your applicant, ESI and its affiliates deliberately chose not to comply with that permitting regulation at the federal level governing their wind farms. And why did they deliberately choose not to comply with that reg? Because, according to the Justice Department, they wanted to get their wind farm operations going as fast as possible so they could get their hands on that federal money as fast as possible. And so my question to you is, they were willing to take on the feds. The US Justice Department has a lot of lawyers and prosecutors and investigators, a heck of a lot more than Franklin County has, <laughs> and yet they were willing to flout federal law and get hit with almost $35 million of penalties and fines and remedial efforts. I say to you gentlemen, if they were willing to do that, to the feds, how do you think they're going to deal with Franklin County and the poor and the poor landowners? I'll okay it with Judy because she's entertaining. And Judy's the, been here before. And, and the, and the uh, yeah, and the poor. Not only how will they deal with your regs, which I hope you will amend and update, but the poor landowners that they get to sign contracts with one of their myriad of companies that they set up. Go on the website of the Delaware and Florida Secretaries of State. Google Next Era. See how many companies that they have. I've represented businesses my whole career, and it's legitimate. You can set up a whole bunch of different companies, and each one is liable. But guess what? When they submitted their little supplemental material, using the logo of Next Era Energy, but the application is by Tower. Only Tower is liable, not Next Era Energy. They're just using their logo. Thank you very much. Thanks for time. Well, good morning. My name is Steve Saul, and I live at 1457 Haskell Road. Uh, we've owned property here for some 30 years. Uh, this clearly is a very important issue to this county and to this state. Um, I don't know enough to make a thoughtful, logical decision as to where I stand. Given the importance of this decision, I would suggest that our elected officials and those in positions of power follow through with a study so that you're able to incorporate this into a thoughtful, logical decision-making process. So when the decision is made, you'll have solid grounds upon your decision that you can make. That basically is it, and I look forward to, to getting the results of this study as well as what your decision is. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Next. We go next row. Kendra Titus, 2961 Lobat Road, Ottawa, Kansas. Um, I want you as constituents to um, protect us from this because um, if our land values go down, um, a lot of people will not be able to afford to live in Franklin County or sell their properties and people need to think about this. Also, I was involved in an eminent domain several years ago where they could try to come in and take your land. And um, they talked about, oh, we notified seven people in the surrounding areas. I was only notified by an eminent domain because luckily one of uh, my neighbors was on the county commission at the time. And he informed me. I did not know that there was going to be an eminent domain of my property through the, the, the city, and um, if I wasn't informed, a lot of people are not informed about what is going on, and I know on our, um, they said there's 900 people against this. 
I think if a lot of the people in the city were informed about what's going on, there would be 10,000 on there, and that's all, you know, the, everybody would be informed. Also, the wind turbines um, in other counties that I know that people have them, people don't realize they're talking about um, what they affect, but they do affect small animals, and um, in the areas, if it was close enough to town, a lot of people that, it's not affecting me because we're in the county, because I noticed that a lot of people here are in the county, and a lot of people in town like, oh, it's not affecting me, but it will affect them. It'll affect their small animals because of the, the loud noises. It actually drives them crazy. Um, so I want you to vote against this. And also another thing is if um, we block this out and we have the county, we, we need to show it for everybody else because then our land values will go up because we will be the most beautiful place to move to because we will not have those wind turbines around. Thank you. Who's next? Anybody on that row? Anyone else? Go back another row. All right, just to... Good morning. morning. If I were you, I'd have tired ears by now. Docile ears is what Confucius would say. I'm Scott Jurgen. Uh, I live at 2263 Nevada Road, Ottawa, Kansas. That's out there about seven miles southeast of here. Uh, I'm pretty reluctant to speak because I'm on the other side of most of these guys. And I'm a little nervous. Um, here's some language I've heard this morning. Uh, Franklin County is safe and rural. Uh, we want to protect our property values. Uh, we live here. These outside corporations, we don't want them. So um, my thesis is it's not really safe here. So I sent an email to the commissioners. Currently, there are 147 uh, oil and gas wells. Um, indicated by the uh, Kansas Geological Society, which are a threat to the surface and groundwater of Franklin County. That's the uh, fossil fuel industry. Now, wind turbines don't threaten water. And I agree with most of the speakers they ain't that pretty, but they don't threaten water. Um, Larry Walrod, in his comprehensive plan, calls this a rural county. I don't think it's really that rural. The uh, Kansas Geological Society indicates there are 10,815 oil and gas wells right here in Franklin County. So a lot of those are abandoned wells, which means that the, they are a threat. And the process is a big operator will own the field that will take most of the resource out of the ground sell the lease to a smaller operator. The smaller operator uh, plugging a, a, a bad, uh, plugging a well in this county costs between four and five thousand dollars a well. So the smaller operators end up, they'll go bankrupt frequently. They're all over the county. These abandoned wells, and uh, so that ends up in the 
ticket of the taxpayer. <coughs> These damn wind, ugly wind turbines do not make holes in the ground. Well, they do make holes in the ground. <laughs> they do make holes in the ground, but they're not holes like oil and gas holes. They don't go down. I'm sorry, can, can you hear me? A lot of people in the back probably can't. Okay, yeah, uh, so go ahead and speak These into the mic. These damn wind turbines are not like the holes in oil and gas wells, of which there are 10,815 in the county. So wind turbines ain't pretty, but they, um, they're not like oil and gas wells. And these outside corporations, gee whiz, who owns the 10,815 wells? A lot of outside corporations, these ugly outside corporations. And who's doing business with the outside corporations? Well, guys like me who own farms, and guys like you. So the ugly corporations are right here among us. So I think to evaluate this application, you ought to look at the negative externalities, not just of the wind turbines, but oil and gas, commercial, industrial farming, which is eutrophication in the Meridazane River. The upper Meridazane River, which is Franklin County, has 37 impaired water bodies in it. So it's not an easy decision, and I thank you, but um, it's not an up, open and shut decision either. So thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Roger Newton. I hope to live at 1530 Thomas Road in Ottawa. My wife and I and daughter came from the city to Douglas County to live in a rural county. We live in Eudora Township. Absolutely love it. Built a marvelous house last year. Been there one year. We expected it to be our forever house, and it's not. We're too close to the Panasonic footprint. Our daughter goes to school here at Ottawa and Bethel. We came looking for new property closer to here. We found one next door in Douglas County to a dirt bike track. A gentleman from New Jersey is building a 20-acre dirt bike track next door to the property that we had agreed to buy. We then dropped that and we found another <coughs> property that has no oil jacks on the property, but it does in the surrounding properties with these tremendous storage tanks that are all obsolete. They now have made a regulation, I'm sure you know of, that they build a dam around those oil tanks so that they, when they leak, they don't extend too far. We thought that was ugly. We got away from that. We found this property down here. We want to live in Franklin County. And now we have neighbors that have signed contracts, we understand. I don't know the answer to this question, and maybe I could direct it to this gentleman over here. If you deny this wind farm and these turbines, those contracts that are already existing, can they continue to go on? Or would your denial of this uh, project cause, I don't know, these homeowners to give their uh, money they've already received back? How does that, how does that operate? You don't need to answer, but that's a question I propose, and I would like an answer to if somebody could answer that. I also wonder if our value of our property goes down, and through the years our taxes continue to go up, how fair is that? 
Um, we thought that we would have the right to choose a piece of property that we want to now make our forever. That's just our personal deal. I want to be a Franklin County resident. I wanted to be a Douglas County resident. Our school is here. Our daughter's only halfway through. She's going to go there six more years. We don't want to move further away to Anderson County, who's already won this uh, fight. You guys have a big decision to make. I hope that um, that since these folks and I soon will be a constituent and a and a voter, I hope you uh, you decide what's best for all of us. This is America. We all get a choice, and uh, and we expect uh, what Franklin has and offers, which is prized to us. Uh, we know that you appreciate it. I hope your vote shows that appreciation. So. We'll open it up all the way to the back of the room. Go ahead. Trisha Webb, 15549 South Ratner Road, Overbrook, Kansas. So start off for the gentleman that talked about they don't ruin water. Um, talk to the residents of Ontario, Canada, um, residents in New York State, Oregon State, and Washington State, with the basis of these going down possibly 50 foot. And depending on if they want turbines that are higher, they can go deeper. They can ruin the aquifers underneath of them as well as the groundwater runoff that we rely on for our wells. Um, I've heard a lot of talk about property rights. Well, when you buy a piece of property, it's already zoned. It's zoned agricultural in these cases. When they bought it, they bought it with the intent of farming. If it wasn't zoned agricultural, you know, they wouldn't have to come and ask for a conditional use permit. This is industrial, industrial wind. Are you, you're not going to get taxes off of it. You're going to lose taxes on property values. Do you have a plan for how you're going to pay for all of your infrastructure when property values start dropping and people moving out and you're losing money? There is a chip plant that they are proposing and they're going to be putting in at Beto Junction. All of these people are going to need places to live. Are they going to want to live? next to wind turbines, are property planners going to decide, oh, this would be a great place for a housing subdivision when their backyard is full of wind turbines? I don't think so. What are you going to make more money off of? The little paltry little bit amount that these companies are offering you to put these up? Or are you going to make more money off of new housing? When people have the money to buy a new house, they generally have the money for nicer vehicles. They have boats. They have trailers. You're going to make more money off of that. They're also going to be getting their gas locally, getting their morning pot, coffee, all these little businesses that can come about, but they won't come if you have wind turbines. With the current regulations, the county also didn't think of the possibility of 500 foot plus tall wind turbines. So I think your regulations need to be relooked at, and you need to have something in there that states. You know, if they come at us with a certain height or whatever, then we will relook at the zoning. Um, and as far as people being worried about lawsuits, the precedence is already there for Mubansi County. Um, and it, with Tower Associates, do you want to do business with a company that won't be around in 10 to 15 years? Because prior to Tower Associates, they were Boulevard Associates. And then once people become you know, aware of Bull or Tower Associates, and there's enough backlash and people not wanting them around, they'll just change their name to become a new, a new company. Um, it's obvious by the room full of people here, you know, that they don't want it. And she, you know, she said she has 900 people on her Facebook page. I can guarantee that that number would <coughs> triple, if not more, if the younger generation was on Facebook. You know, um, like my kids tell me, you know, Facebook's for old people. So, you know, just listen to your people. This isn't also just Franklin County that it's going to affect. It's going to affect your surrounding counties. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi.
Hi, my name is Melidia Payne, 3553 Oregon Road. Um, I had no idea there was any discussion of having wind turbines in Franklin County until 17 February, two days before the Planning Commission was set to vote on approving a MET tower for Next Era Energy. Since then, I've been doing research on wind turbines, leading me to read the 107 pages of the Franklin County Comprehensive Plan. After reading the goals and guiding principles of the county, it is clear commercial wind energy cannot coexist in Franklin County with five out of the six main goals of the county. In five minutes, I can't list all examples of the many statements within the plan that show that contradiction, but here are a few. Quote, encourage new development to respect the rural quality of life, pursuit of agriculture, and natural beauty of Franklin County. Quote, other important factors affecting the rural urban fringe housing market include the aesthetic quality of the landscape in Franklin County. Quote, one important challenge facing the county over the next 20 years is to allow people to build homes in rural areas without destroying the very characteristics that make rural living attractive, such as open space, peace and quiet, fewer neighbors, farm heritage and rural character, healthy sense of community, and natural beauty of rural lands, end quote. If we don't want developers to ruin our rural quality of life and our beautiful views, why would we allow an alternative energy company to ruin that? The land use plan reflects the importance of maintaining and, and enhancing the county's natural features and resources. It is apparent after reading the comprehensive plan that the natural beauty of Franklin County was paramount to those who attended the work study sessions and those who wrote and approved the plan. Wind turbines do not maintain nor enhance the natural features and beauty of Franklin County. Quote, Strong leadership is required for Franklin County to enhance its opportunities for economic development and ensure that workers and families are retained and attracted to the county, end quote. The county has made a large financial commitment to Proximity Park, and we are trying to attract businesses to fill it. We need to make decisions to ensure that families remain in Franklin County and new workers are attracted to Franklin County. Wind turbine farms do not do that. Look at the declining populations and property values in many other counties with wind turbines. We are calling on your strong leadership today to deny the Met Tower permit and protect Franklin County from wind turbine farms. Another issue is our population density. Franklin County is a mere 577 square miles, making us the 90th smallest county in Kansas, with only 15 counties smaller. Of those 15 smaller counties, only five of them have over 20,000 residents, and none of those counties have wind turbines. Franklin County has a population of 25,986 people, giving us a population density of 45 people per square mile. Of all the counties in Kansas that I found to have wind turbines, only one of those counties has anywhere near our population density, and it is the largest county in Kansas with 1,447 square miles compared to our 571. That's a big difference. Nearly all counties with wind turbines have population densities under 20 people per square mile, and the majority of them have under 10 people per square mile compared to our 45 people per square mile. The representative for the applicant of the Met Tower refused of the Met Tower refused to specifically answer many questions asked by your planning commission at their meeting on 19 February. One of those being how many wind turbines they want to put in Franklin County. So we as residents and you as commissioners are left to guess as to what the company plans to do in our county. The representative stated their company is looking to build commercial wind farms of quote 30,000 to 45,000 acres. That would be over 12% of the land in our county. No one is asking you to decide whether or not you believe in or support alternative energy. We are simply asking you to say that commercial wind turbines are not a good fit for Franklin County. Please support your Frank Franklin County Planning Commission's motion to not approve the Met Tower permit. This fine gentleman over here can say this tower permit and one single landowner is not connected to wind turbines and threaten you with the founding fathers, legalese, and talk a slick game. But it's just like the white speck on chicken manure. 
It may not look like manure, but it's manure, and this tower is wind energy. If it wasn't, there wouldn't be people here supporting it, and he wouldn't be paid his high fees to be here. The representative stated they would not share the results because it's private information. Therefore, no one here would, be, would benefit from that private information, and they wouldn't be here supporting this skinny little tower. All right. Anyone else in the back of the room? Hello, I'm Joe Prockno, 2645 Georgia Road, Ottawa, Kansas. And I really don't have a whole lot to say. I got a few comments. I just hope you deny this application for this tower. But I was just really getting into this less than a week ago. And I was going around trying to get uh, petitions signed for this, talking to landowners and stuff. There's a couple of farmers around here that I talked to. They wouldn't sign the petition, but you know they asked why I was against it, and I was t explaining to them that it would possibly drop property values and stuff. So, so they said, well, well that would be a good thing for me. I can go out and buy all this property when people start leaving, and I could get it at a cheap price. And I hope that ain't what all these farmers around here that are signing these leases are hoping for, that they want to take over the county or whatever, get more cheap land that they can farm. So that's the main thing. I, I, I don't want to see our property values go down. I've, you know, I've been living here 23 years, and I've built a few houses and stuff, but uh, I like the property values. I mean, I don't like them going up, but you know, because then your taxes go up and stuff, but I don't want them to drop where you know, few farmers can own the whole property, the whole county. So please don't allow this application to go through. That's all I can say. Thank you. Anyone else back half of the room? Good morning, everybody. Hey, my name's Jim Kimball. I'm from 588 Utah Road, Lane, Kansas. Drink coffee with a couple of you, eat breakfast on occasion. Still going to do that when this is all said and done, not any issues whatsoever. Hey, guys, my family moved here to Franklin County in about 1867. Okay, six generations we've been here. The sixth generation was helping us work cattle this weekend on the farm. Okay, we intend on raising cattle, we intend on raising hogs. That's our business. We don't intend on wind energy. That's not part of our plan. We plan on keeping this in our family and we, and we want to do that. But I'm not going to quote a bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to talk from the heart six generations back. Now my grandkids may have to make this decision at some point in time, but it's not going to be my decision to make today. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Go ahead, ma'am. There you are. Hi, and like everyone has said, thank you for your time and listening. I appreciate that. As you can tell, I'm not a speaker. I've been taking a few notes and scratching through them. Name and address. Uh, we own and operate a farm at 4896 Nevada Road, Baldwin. That's in Franklin County. We live across the street. We're on County Line Road in Douglas County and on a farm at 1526 N1 Road, Baldwin City. Um, hadn't really thought about saying anything. I am opposed to this. But after listening to the attorney, some of the words he said, I, I, it just blew my mind. Then when he said Burger, uh, Burger King, a tire company, they're no different. Is a Burger King or a tire company going to come out in the rural area and build? No. You have zoning for that, specifically commercial or industrial, whatever would be needed for it. He also said uh, met tower, they need it before and during. Uh, he said a met tower can be before and during turbines, not temporary, not for years, if they would even be during turbines. Um, he also said Met Tower's the only purpose is for the future viability of turbines. It is a first step to turbines. 
Are wind turbines installed with that met, without the MET tower first? Then it's the first step. Sorry, I'm having to kind of jump through my notes here. Why a MET tower? To get turbines. What follows turbines? Transmission lines. That's going to affect even more people than just around the MET tower. If you were aware of a public nuisance at the first step, wouldn't you want to stop it from becoming the public nuisance? My family does not want the MET tower. We ask for a ban on commercial energy in Franklin County, a moratorium on a MET tower of at least two years. Deny the application as your staff recommended. They researched it. In concluding, just please protect Franklin County, our farm ground, our rural acres, our community, our county as a whole. Thank you. <coughs> Who's next? Good morning. My name's David Judd. I'm with Judd Ranch, 423 Highway K68. Uh, myself and my family of three generations operate Judd Ranch. We have a fairly sizable land mass out there right on the edge of Franklin County in, in the very northwest kind of corner of, of Franklin County. I guess when we purchased all that land, it was mainly for agriculture use. However, we thought that there probably would be alternatives as time went on and as other technologies and things came available. We bought that land to make money on. We purchased that land because we enjoy the ranch setting and we are trying to preserve the natural land as it was in Kansas. We probably have as much native grass as about anywhere in Franklin County. And that was uh, one of the things that attracted us to the area. We've been very fortunate to uh, have been able to put together as much of that native grass as we have. And we certainly, our whole family uh, definitely thrives on the, the ranch setting and the, the naturalness and the beauty of the land. However, agriculture in the state of Kansas produces, I think, over 76% of the total revenue that comes into this state. It's huge for the state of Kansas. There's only like 1% or less of us folks that are 100% agriculture in this state, which means we can be outvoted quite simply on the things that may appeal to some people on their land. I understand there's uh, somewhere around probably 35,000 acres that have signed up between Douglas County and Franklin County in that location of landowners that are serious about possibly adding something else to their portfolio to improve their, hopefully improve their bottom lines or whatever their purpose is. You know, we're not talking a nuclear facility here. We're just talking wind turbines. And I, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in a lot of people that have come to me and all they can talk about is the negative things about this situation. And uh, a lot of what they're telling me, I think, is far from, from uh, what I'm learning. Our operation has not signed any leases and uh, are still looking at, you know, possible options. But I guess my belief when we bought land and growing up in the United States of America and growing up in agriculture was that, you know, when you put together an operation, uh, you should have a lot of say on what goes on in that operation. And I think one of the biggest things people here today have talked about is, uh, you know, they don't want to see those wind turbines. But, you know, 
when you're a rancher, you don't want to see more houses go in. You want to keep that natural beauty that's out there. You preserve the wildlife. Uh, you know, an operation like ours is in harmony with the, the uh, not only the environment, but the wildlife, and I think with most people, because I obviously what I get out of all this by talking to all these folks is they love that natural beauty. So, you know, why wouldn't they want to come and build a house in that location? But we don't plan on selling that property. We plan on keeping it, hopefully, and keeping the operation going so that the generations of kids and grandkids that we have in our family can keep this thing going on. So I guess, you know, I, I think it's sad when people that pay a lot of taxes in this community and produce a lot of jobs in this county uh, can't have more say on what happens to their to their land. So. Uh, I hope everybody will keep that in mind. I think uh, I haven't heard anybody that has said, well, they have, you know, talked to the wind turbine people. They, they just talk about negative things they've heard in other places and other wind companies. And I think uh, maybe everybody should look at what could this do for the county? How many dollars could this bring into the county? How many jobs could it create? And, uh, you know, during the building process, it will definitely bring a lot of dollars to the county. Um, your time. Wrap up your thought, would you, Dave? Pardon? Your, your time's up. We you wrap okay. up your thought. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Commercial not agriculture. Okay. If you can't respect, that's. You're going to have to leave the meeting if you can't sit quietly. Uh, my name is Lorenda Walter. I am at 3225 Georgia Road. My maiden name is Eichenberger. We also uh, farm, ranch, raise cattle, North Franklin County. Our big concern is, well, two things. Potential 40% uh, property value reduction Again, some people have asked us, what's, what, how is the county going to recoup that? You know, that's, that's a huge revenue loss for the county. Property values go down. And I know it's, it's different with, with assessed values and stuff, but I see it as a huge potential loss of profit for the county. How are you going to recoup that? Um, and then additionally, we can make the decision whether or not we sign a lease on our place or, you know, whatever. We don't have that decision when it comes to eminent domain cutting through our pastures, rock pastures, it's going to, you know, you start, I don't know how many of you guys have trenched in rock, but it's not fun. You dig up all sorts of stuff, your pastures are never the same. You're never spraying the same, you're never raising grass the same. So those are our big concerns. Obviously, the environmental, I mean, I've, I wrote to all you guys this week, the environmental impacts, but those are my two big ones. The, the property tax value, how are you going to address that if, if all these property values Reduced by forty percent, and then, uh, and then em the eminent domain factor. That's our big deal. So, thank you, guys. Good morning. My name is Carlsey Boardman. Uh, I live at two four seven nine Idaho Road, which is in Williamsburg. We just moved there recently. Um, I'm from Franklin County and just moved back um, to seek the way of life that all these people have been talking about. And one thing that I haven't heard brought up this morning is just uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the fact that this gentleman uh, rec representing the energy company, th this is his job. He's here um, because this is his, his work. The rest of us wearing red and who have mostly predominantly been speaking to you, we have taken time out of our day. I threw three kids in the car this morning. Not the best thing to do if you've ever had little kids. People are missing work to come tell you that we're, we're that passionate about it. And we're showing up today to urge you to vote against this. We do think it's a step in that direction. Um, but moreover, if you support us in this, we'll come back and support you, whether that's a re-election campaign, whether you're worried about a lawsuit down the road. Uh, we'll have your back for those sorts of things, too. So I just urge you to um, 
listen uh, to us and to, to say no. Nobody in this room has enough money to decommission one of these windmills, okay? So your public works can't just go out on a Wednesday morning and take one of these wind turbines out. This is a massive project and it's forever. So I just urge you to consider that and know that if you represent us well, we're gonna have your back when, when the time comes. Thank you. Anyone else? Since we're getting towards the end. One more. My name is Danae Schoenberg. I live at 729 Thomas Road, Pomona. I just found out about this on Friday night. Um, I happened, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten a lot of good sleep <laughs> since Friday night. So I'm a little um, extra emotional. Um, Friday night I happened to see a map of the um, contracts that have already been signed in our area. Uh, I was you know, pretty heartbroken. All of our many uh, familiar names, people that we know all around us. Um, the closest property is less than a mile from our house. And as my husband and I and my son were driving here today, there's 10 uh, households, 10 families who live uh, even closer to that um, particular contracted property. Um, there's multiple ones to the west of us, and uh, I've already engaged with another neighbor who I didn't see his name on any of the contracts, but, uh, you know, I never expected to be standing here being at odds with my neighbors. I don't know if you're very familiar with the Appanoose Township, the Appanoose uh, West Franklin School District. It's a very uh, congenial, close-knit community. There's a lot of young families who live there. Uh, some years back, those young families who had come back into the area or stayed in the area voted down a bond issue to uh, consolidate uh, the school district because they are so loyal to the school at Appanoose that um, they wanted their children <coughs> to go to that school. Uh, these are all the families that are living around these um, potentially contracted properties. I've talked uh, to three other families since Friday. They had not heard about this. They want, uh, they don't want this to happen. Uh, I haven't had time to talk to many more of our neighbors, but uh, I just wanted to put a face to it. It's our community, it's our neighborhood. Um, my son, um, who's here, he follows all of the um, farmers and the agriculture that goes on. He's stood at the window since he could be aware of that and he's kept me updated on so-and-so's combine just went by and so-and-so's moving their cows and um, I just think about, he's old enough to remember <coughs> if this goes forward how it was before versus how it could be in the future. And um, I know that's super emotional. I know that's dramatic, but um, this is just gonna be really life-changing for a lot of young families. You know, we chose to come to Franklin County. We wanted to be out of Douglas County. Um, that's where we met and married. And we've been so happy in our community and um, to be raising our family up there and in that area, so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's move on to commissioner's discussion then. Who wants to start? Go ahead, Derek. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to share just a couple of perspectives um, prior to the five of you discussing this. Um, one is my legal perspective, and then the other is my practical perspective. You know, Mr. Anderson was up and, and wanted to make a couple of points. Uh, the first, that the application is for a Met Tower, not a wind farm. Um, 
from a legal perspective, uh, I completely agree with that. I mean, literally, the application is for a Met Tower. Um, the, the other point he made was that, you know, mm -hmm. associated with this project is a landowner who just wants to exercise their property rights. I, I agree with that, too. Legally, that's a true statement. Cold, I thought you, and I'm transitioning now to, to practically speaking, I thought you asked a great question of him, um, and that was, is the sole purpose of this tower to determine the viability for a wind energy project? To which he answered, yeah, that's, that's its only purpose. And so, as I sit here, practically speaking, if there are three of you that know you do not support wind energy in Franklin County. If you know that, it makes no sense at all to approve of this tower um, because you're, you know you're not for the subsequent wind farm if that were to ever come. So in my mind, practically, you're, I mean, it, it's just a waste of time. And so I think that's something that, that I would want the four of you to think about. The other thing, and, and we've heard this for several weeks, we, we've heard the word moratorium. What I would say is if you don't want wind energy and you deny this application, you are creating a natural moratorium. I don't think you need to announce anything. This, this is the only wind energy company we I mean, to my knowledge, that we've ever been approached by, and Pat could, I mean, have you, you <coughs> have heard from any other wind energy company? I don't believe the, the four of you have heard from any other wind energy company. I will tell you from a staff perspective, if you proceed to vote this down and we get contacted by a subsequent wind energy company, the first thing out of our mouth will be, we went through this with NextEra, um, Franklin County made the decision to vote it down, and I suspect that stops any subsequent project in its tracks as well. And so I just, I think it's important to know you, you will create that moratorium should you decide to, to vote against this. And, and from there, I'm here to answer any questions you have, um, but it's really a policy decision at this point. So thank you. Does anybody need to ask any follow-up questions? Get any more information? I don't. All right. I just have one question, Derek. Uh, uh, the wind turbine lawyer kind of insinuated that would be some sort of uh, liability of some kind to deny this application. Did you see anything like that? That. Um, so what I would say to that is if you want to have an in-depth discussion about legal exposure, um, that's something that we would need to recess into executive session to do because that's an attorney-client privilege thing. But on a surface level, I'm not worried about that. I practically, I don't know, I mean, maybe we get told we have to erect a tower, but we're not going to Meteorological get, tower. A meteorological tower, but we're not going to get told that we have to erect an entire wind farm. So I don't think it makes sense from anybody's perspective. If you guys indicate that you don't want wind farms, I, I, it doesn't make any sense to try and push because you have the ultimate say. Whenever that is, if it's four years from now, whenever it would be, you would have the ultimate say because that will come back as a separate special use permit application. Does that answer why, your question? Why I asked that was because we're just talking about a tower. We are. And property rights. And a person has property and supposedly indicates that you could do whatever you want on that property if you want to put up a tower. That's your business, and, and putting up this tower doesn't have anything to do, supposedly, with uh, you know commercial wind farm production. It's a separate thing. It's just a tower. It could be a tower for anything. That, yeah, I, I, 
I, I think maybe, I think it's just the way that you worded it, Roy. I, I think that this tower does not legally bind the county to a wind farm, but this tower's sole purpose is to gather readings for a subsequent wind farm. So the two are absolutely related. One just doesn't legally bind you to the other, if that makes sense. Okay, I don't have any other questions. No other questions? I think it's important we share our rationale, our thoughts ahead of voting so that our decisions don't seem to come out of nowhere. So who wants to start that? I can. If, all right, I can. You know, when we look at special use permits, I think above all we need to ensure that the benefits are going to outweigh any negatives. Um, a meteorological tower, admittedly, doesn't have the amount of negatives that a lot of uses we're used to do. They're pretty minimal. Yeah, speak. <clears throat> However, even though the negative outcomes from a meteorological tower aren't, aren't as big as a lot of the things we're used to, um, it's pretty clear to me uh, through digging into this, through calls, emails, and then uh, people I've heard from, but I think maybe a, a better um, Oh, uh, a better sample is people I've reached out to that I hadn't heard from, just kind of average folks that may not have the vested interest that that uh, people on the this ends of the spectrum that we've heard from. And uh, through that, it's, it's pretty clear to me that the majority does not support uh, commercial wind in the county. Um, and full disclosure, my my opinions don't don't uh, completely align with that. I think I'm a little more open-minded to the idea than a lot of folks we've heard from today. However, nothing about wind energy is, provides such a positive, such a great um, benefit to the county that, in my mind, I would be able to uh, justify. Uh, circumventing the desire of the majority of the people, even though my, my opinion may not completely agree with them. Uh, so for me, I, I don't see a path for a Met Tower to end up having a net positive gain to the county because I don't think it'll ever result in commercial wind energy. So I would, I would not uh, vote to affirm it. You know, one thing, one thing I might say, uh, like I said, behind here for 18 years, and I've had to make a lot of these decisions throughout the time. And I did serve two terms on the planning board. So I went through that part of the life also. And that's uh, uh, and I and want to commend uh, any of you that was here. Uh, you were very respectable to the planning board. And I thought our chairman ran a very good meeting when when this was presented, it was very gracious to everybody, just like I think today we've been this way. Uh, and then, been mentioned, I appreciate all the emails I got, for or against. I mean, I, I make a, I don't make a policy. I did contact one person, uh, the very first one I got, but my job up here is to be impartial. So, you know. And if I have a, pr a problem out in the county, one person and they have a problem, yeah, I'll just sit down, me and you in a room, and talk about it. But this is something this whole board has to make as a decision. It's not a, just a decision for me or either one of these or our, or our council. It's a decision we all have to make. And so I don't see it being a, a, a path to what the public wants. Uh, if it was a tower that I felt it was an actual national weather company or something coming in just to study our currents and airs and get weather reports and so forth, that's a whole different basis. We all know where this would go on from here. So that's all I have to say about it. This, this is a hard decision. Um, I guess personally, 
um, yesterday I was down through uh, southern Kansas and also down through there uh, Friday. Uh, uh, you got wind tires all the way around the city of Thayer. I mean, you got, uh, and then uh, they're just uh, down in there. They're they're, th they're thick. Not saying good, bad, or indifferent. But, yeah, very um, good. Rob, and, can't hear you. Really? Is this better? Yeah, I can. Okay. Anyway, um, I guess overall, just with what's going on, I, I'm not able to support it. I uh, I feel um, I feel uh, for uh, Dave because. Uh, with uh, property and stuff he has, it uh, looks like a perfect situation for some life. So, anyway, that's that's all I've got to say. Well, I, I live in the country, and a lot of this uh, proposed site for development is uh, in my district out there. But we're talking about the Met Tower here today, and and from talking with the lawyer a little bit this morning, uh, I can't see where the Met Tower is gonna help Franklin County when we won't even know what the what the uh, results are gonna be. I mean, if it's proprietary, it, it's just gonna be a tower, and uh, that's uh, one of my concerns. If it was gonna be shared uh, information, like Don said, a geological information, uh, that would be more conducive to approve this tower, but it, the way it sounds now is it only has one purpose uh, down the road is uh, <coughs> to gather information for this uh, turbine company, and, that, and that's the whole uh, function for this tower. And when we do look at special use permits, we look at how they uh, benefit the county in, in a whole and it doesn't look like this Met Tower is going to uh, help the county in a whole. You know, I went through, uh, my farm got uh, part of the cutoff when we built New 59 Highway. And I think everybody would agree that we really needed New 59 Highway. But it affected everybody in northern Franklin County because it cut through their farms or cut the farms completely off or they had to sell their houses and stuff like that. But this is entirely different a ball game here because there's so many people that contacted me that are, are uh, against the future of uh, any kind of development, uh, commercial wind development. Just like Derek said, if there was a big desire to, to pursue this further, then we could go ahead and approve the, the tower and, and keep on going. But uh, Everybody that's contacted me mostly have all been uh, against that possibility of that happening in the future. So um, I don't think I can support this uh, uh, tariff being put up. It doesn't seem like it's going to uh, help Franklin County at all. It's just for you know private private industry help. That's all I have. Sounds like we're in agreement that uh, uh, to deny the application, uh, a motion to do so would be to deny a special use permit application 2211-2009, uh, allowing the construction and operation of a 197-foot guy-wired meteorological tower in an A1 zoning district. Anyone care to make that motion? I'll make that motion to... Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Vice Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right, let's take a 10-minute uh, ten. Ten break. And, uh, we'll readjourn. <laughs> All right, let's get back to work. It's been at least 10 minutes. Hey folks, back in the corner. We're going to get back to work, so if you could move out to the hallway, that'd help us. We're starting with Stevenson. Ah. Get 
Our second item of business is to consider for approval a rezoning application to rezone approximately five acres from A1 to an RE residential estates application ending in 2015. Okay, as stated, this is a rezoning application 2211-2015 for the Stephenson. Um, this is a 40-acre parcel currently zoned as A1, and we are taking basically a tract of five... Could you close that door there? Of five acres, and we are going to create a five-acre tract that will put it in the RE uh, district, and then the... Re the subsequent 35 acres that are left will fall within the A2 district, being as it's under 40 acres at this point. Um, as you will notice, this property is actually sp split into two sections because there's the rail to trails that goes right through uh, a section of it, uh, about three, I'd say two quarters of it is to the uh, east and then one quarter would be to the west. But we didn't want to divide that up with the wet rail trail because if you notice you'll see that the lagoon actually falls on the smaller section and that way we can consistently keep the uh, entire plat together as far as utilities and everything like that. Um, the, obviously there'll be a right of way within the middle that they can't uh, build to because the rail to trail has its own uh, right of ways. The lagoon goes under the old rail bed. I, it must. It must. Oh, uh, we over there don't somewhere. actually. Yeah. yeah. No. It's an interesting one. I don't. I assume. I have to assume the lagoon was there first, and then they just built over it because they built it up. But that also means that it was put there prior to the railroad. So I don't. I don't know. Maybe they. Uh, I wasn't part of that process at the time. Um, so, like I said, we uh, the area already is surrounded by uh, our A1 through A2, RE. We have many of these uh, areas already zoned in these districts. Um, the community really doesn't change. We're just adding one tract, and then the other tract is, as I understand it, still going to be just farmed. Um, I, they had not come to us about building on the larger tract. I uh, believe it is a tenant to sale situation and that's why they wanted to continue farming the one section of 35 <coughs> acres and then be able to allow the tenant to purchase the lot i think um as i understand it so um i don't believe we have any uh the i believe the 35 acre might have some floodplain attached to it but again that's not going to affect any building and as we uh, have it with the five acres we don't have any setback issues or anything like that so I believe that's all I have for this rezoning, unless you have any questions. Unusual one. Any questions for Pat? No. Is there a motion to approve uh, rezoning application 2211-2015? Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Vice Chair Weimar? Yes. All right. Third item of business application 2021. Okay. Uh, this is another rezoning application 2021 2021. 2212 2021. Um, Flat out, this was confusing the first time I tried to explain it to the Planning Commission. We have a lot of moving parts on this one. However, it is relatively simple. Um, if you go to your, uh, if you would like to follow along, I had to utilize the maps uh, before and after. What we have is a two tracks um, of A1 <coughs> stature, and we're moving basically a, a, a property line adjustment to make we are con uh, combining two lots into one that takes the existing RE 10 acres and we're adding it to the A1 district that it falls within the boundaries of. Um, and then we're actually moving that 10 acres and we're creating a nine acre parcel to, from the existing A1 to the south, I believe. And we are going to create a parcel that actually keeps the residents within um, so now we're going to end up with a, uh, A1 of 60, 68 acres to the north, and then to the south, we'll have an A1 that has 71 acres, and then also an our east district of nine acres that encompasses the house and 
proper uh, utilities and whatnot to include sewer and all that. <coughs> um, we're not changing the dynamics. Adding, we're really not even adding any small tracks because we're subtracting a, an RE and then we're just moving it. Um, the reason being is the entire northern section of that existing A1 is in the floodplain, and at this moment, they're having to pay insurance on the entire tract. This 10 acres will reduce their payments to the insurance company, as I understand it, so that uh, the, un, uh, the property without the home on it uh, no longer would be required to have floodplain insurance, and so um, they're only covering what, where the house exists. This also removes the opportunity for two more houses to the north. So we're actually improving the situation um, as far as density by a slim margin, not, nothing extreme. But um, with that, uh, I believe that, that basically satisfies what we have for uh, staff mm -hmm. rezoning. Questions for Pat? So a person that they want is on that north it would be able to build a house there? Yeah. No, they absolutely would. It just reduces the number of houses. We would have had uh, the ability to create two uh, parcels there. Now that we've removed those border lines, we've combined them, so now you're only able to put on one extra house rather than two. Even though it would be in the 100-year floodplain? Well, in that case, they would have to do a feat of engineering to make that work. Now, in, from a common sense perspective, probably not. But right now I'm working on some other projects where they are in the 100-year floodplain. And I believe they're going to try and go through some engineering situations to make it feasible. So nothing's impossible if you have enough money. <laughs> right on the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is application 2212-2021. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Motion approved. Second. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Vice Chair Wehmeyer? Yes. And our fourth item of business is rezoning application 2212-2022. Um, I'm going to just pause for a second. I want, I've kind of uh, forgotten to establish that the Planning Commission on all of these rezonings has uh, recommended approval for them. I should have added that in the prior two. Um, had they said something otherwise, I think I would have brought that up. Um, with that said, this is application 2212-2022. Uh, this is actually just taking a chunk of three acres off of an existing parcel of 142 acres or 145 acres and then that will reduce it to 142 acres therefore we do not have to do anything with the zoning of the larger parcel the three acres that are now being uh, attached to the existing <coughs> seven acres there's a seven acre lot there that they are combining this three acres with to i believe for resale purposes um, just adding on so they have more space to work with. However, if you notice, most of that is in the floodplain. So I don't know that we're going to be adding any structures or anything to that nature. Again, maybe some engineering, but uh, I think, I believe it's just to add to the size of the property. Um, so we are really just re uh, zoning the three acres out of the A1 to an RE because we are attaching it to the seven that gives us over the five acre limit. Um, again, we're not really changing anything on the dynamics of the community. Um, it doesn't, uh, we're not even changing the zoning of any applicable uh, land. It's just adding it to an existing parcel that's already zoned RE. So we're not adding to the density. It doesn't affect the infrastructure in the area. Just on the boundary line. Right. right. Just uh, basically a boundary, boundary line adjustment. Right. This is application 2212-2022. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Vice Chair Waymire? Yes. And on the record, I'd like to say, go Chiefs. 
bunch of folks here wearing red uh, cheering for Pat today, but I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, staff reports, Derek. Yeah, just a couple of things um, that were discussed a little bit earlier. One is our comp plan. I can go back to the end of Walrod's tenure here, and he was talking about the need to update our comp plan. Kenny consistently talked about needing to update our comp plan. That's very much on staff's radar. Having said that, with where we're at with countywide software and other initiatives, I would say at the very earliest, you're looking at 2024. And, and it won't just be a look at the renewable energy section. We have to do a comprehensive look at everything. And, and, and there will be a lot of policy discussion with that on what do you want the future of Franklin County to look like? Um, because we, um, I think preserving agriculture, which is very much a staple in our current plan, is a, absolutely an admirable goal. But we also know we've got more and more folks that are wanting to move to Franklin County. So just that discussion on how to balance all of that. Um, but that, that's probably a 24 thing, if not past that even. So, but, but we can have those discussions as we get closer. Second thing that came up is is notice and, and how we notice up meetings and and, and I'll just say um, if any of you or, or any of my staff have better ideas on how we can do that I'm all ears because we're at a point it's hard to you can't catch everyone like some people are online I mean it's all over our website that's easy for some folks not for others some folks listen to Kofo Kofo talks you know, plays our Wednesday meetings all the time. You can learn that from COFO. Um, some folks may read the Herald, it, it's, but it's hard. Absent sending a mailer to literally every single resident, which is going to be exorbitant in cost. I mean, that, that's not feasible. That's, I mean, that would never fly. It's just there are no easy solutions. So just know that's a discussion we've actually had um, there's just, there's no easy way to do it. So, and that's, that's all I have this morning, Cole. All right. Sheriff? I'll be very brief because we've been here a long time. I just got back from a conference out in Washington, D.C. Um, we had a good conference, good training and, and meetings out there. Um, and I also had the opportunity to meet with um, part of our federal delegation out there. So I did meet with Congresswoman uh, Davids. And, uh, and some of her staff, as well as some staff from Senator Marshall's office, let them know what we were doing in Franklin County as, um, as an organization to address the fentanyl issue um, and kind of what it is that we are seeing and what, what, what we are up against. Um, and then we had a conversation about what they can do to help us and help, help uh, facilitate things that are better. And so um, very good conversations with, uh, with both of those offices, and um, I believe that they are they're very open to hearing what they were they were both very interested in hearing what it is that we are doing what it is that they're doing how that impacts us and so it, i think it was important for them to get that to get that feedback so they do know um what's going on here so i um, just wanted to give that brief update and i'll at some point get with derek and tell him more of the particulars on some of that some of that stuff but uh, it, it was a it was a it was a worthwhile a long weekend. So, other than that, if you guys have any questions for me, I'd answer them. We are catching the urge. Find anything on the deal down on the southwest corner? Livestock. Um, I do not have an update. Um, I don't have an update on that. I, I believe that there were some. They had some pretty good leads, but I don't. Um, I've been out of, out of pocket for a few days, so I don't have any updates for you. But I, I will check. Thank you. Thank you. David. Two quick things. Uh, one, I'm going to be submitting by the end of the week the high-risk rural roads uh, funding application to KDOT. Um, um, got it all put together, just fine-tuning it. Uh, got to visit with our engineer on Old 50 this afternoon, make sure we're um, in agreement with a couple things, but that will be submitted by the end of the week. Uh, the other thing I wanted to let you know, um, um, Several years, a couple of years ago, we did an airspace study on the C&D landfill. That's the one that told us that we had 
you know, as maybe as little as seven years remaining in that uh, that landfill. Um, and we've done a couple of things subsequent to that. One, we're obviously going to expand the footprint of that, but we also bought a landfill compactor to help us with that uh, uh, compaction rate, uh, which is a direct tie to the airspace. Uh, now that we've had that compactor in use for over a year, and we've had a, uh, we also added another equipment operator out there to run that, we have doubled our compaction rate. Uh, up two pounds a yard. Uh, it's like 0.79. I, I don't have the seven nine tons. Yeah, I, I believe so. I don't. I don't. I didn't bring the report with me. Yes. It, it just came in uh, late yesterday, but I did look at the, the well, number. Sixteen hundred. We were in the eight hundreds before. So yeah, and the the percentage was like point three nine when we did this before, and it's up to almost point eight. 0.79 right now, so uh, that com compactor and the, uh, the extra body is really paying dividends. It's pushed the life expectancy out of our existing landfill. Now we're at 11 to 12 years based on tonnage <coughs> and compaction rate. So all of those things are positive. Uh, so we look forward to continuing that operation. And that's that's all I have today. The only thing I'd say about the website is I've had a lot of questions lately about how to be notified of your meetings. And I just like to say publicly, we have a notify me section on there and that people can get on there and sign up to receive all of you guys' um, agendas, whether that be study sessions or regular items. They can also sign up to get planning commission agendas. So there are ways to be notified via email. Um, I, I subscribe to that, so like I see the agenda right now <coughs> posted and make sure that it's posted. It's kind of a checks and balances for, you know, administration to make sure that these things are getting done. So we use it and we encourage everyone else to use it too, so. Commissioners? Yep. Uh, I had a pretty lengthy deal on ran too, but I think I'll wait till next Wednesday. Uh, I will be going to Wellsville meeting tonight and uh, I'll gathered from both city meetings and there's a couple things I need to check on you know you're sitting out there and people things vote on up here and do well people sitting out there doesn't have all the information so I need to check with a couple things they voted on and discussed that I think I know the answer but I want to make sure I know the proper answer I don't have any uh, I agree. let's go let's go home motion to we have it down there. Do you have a motion and a second? Broad, Broad the motion. Please. Need a second. Second. All right. All in favor? Adjourning. Aye. 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 All right. We're out of here. <laughs>